everybody, welcome to Bones Collector. This is a video series where Lori and I are taking the time to play through our library two or three games at a time and then making a video. We want to do that so that we can show you the games all set up so you can get an idea about what is in the box and then I can tell you how to play the game in a little more detail. We seem like a really groovy idea because that's the only kind of ideas we have, groovy because we're groovy people. But we're, we hope you enjoy this series and I'm always telling you that we play our library and that's what I wanted to show you and why I wanted to make these, this video series. So I hope you enjoy it. Hey everybody, welcome to Bones Collector where we just got done playing Summoner Wars. Summoner Wars is a game that came out in 2009. The designer is Colby Douch, D-A-U-C-H. Douch? I don't know if that's the only way you say it or not. But this is a battling game, head to head. Action point system, hand management, uh, of course take that. It's a two player only game first of all. So you have a summoner, I have a summoner, and we're going to go head to head and try and beat down the health of, of the opponent's summoner. So yeah, I mean it's a game I was curious about and this is a new edition. This is called a second edition master set and it was it's quite popular. A lot of people really like this game. They made some improvements to the game from the original version, I understand, like uh, on, on the board itself, it tells you exactly what to do on your turn, how to start your turn, summon, move, build, attack, magic, and then draw up at the end of your turn out of your deck. You start the game, each person has a deck of cards that makes up your faction, who are, you know, your summoner and the rest of your units and, and event cards and things that you can play to affect the game. This is a very tactical game. So you're thinking about where you're going to move your units and the ones that you have in your hand, which ones you're going to you want to play on your next turn depending on which ones your opponent destroys during their turn. Uh, it, you feel kind of helpless a little bit <laughs> when it's not your turn because there's not a lot you can do about anything. Each player on their turn is going to be summoning units and putting them next to their gates that are on the board and you have several of these gates that you can put out and you have to summon next to those gates adjacent to them and when you do that after you've done your summoning step then you're going to move your cards around your units put them in position to where you can attack after you move your units then you can build if you have some structures and gates are the only structures that were in my particular deck but there are other structures in some of the other factions and then the fourth phase of your turn is to attack. So you're simply going to look at your unit cards, like this Hellfire Cultist has a two ranged attack, and if I'm going to attack this Citadel Archer of my opponents, then I'm going to take two dice, because I have two ranged attack, I'm going to roll them, and that result, and I just happen to get two ranged attack, so it would put two damage on that Citadel Archer, and that's that's basically the way this game works. And the production of the game is pretty good. I mean, the cards are, are pretty nice. They're not linen or anything, but they're good card stock. And, and, and then this game comes with six factions. I don't know if the first edition did. I think it may have only come with a couple of factions, but six factions of cards in this particular master set. Uh, some new art on the front of the box. The box is pretty decent as far as a, a physical box. It's, in pretty, it's pretty nice. And I like the game for a number of things. I can see why it's popular. Um, there's not a lot of rules. It's a very small rule book. You just have to familiarize yourself with the keywords in the game on the cards, the card text, and with the, uh, the, the meaning of what they're trying to tell you that that particular unit or that particular event does. So it, it's, it's, you know, these kinds of games drive me a little bit nuts. And it's really, it's, it's why I got rid of Tiny Towns, because I do not like trying to interpret card text. I, I can see why people like this game, however. It's a good game. And, it, and like I say, it's very tactical. Yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of playing your units and, and positioning them to a, uh, make good attacks, to take the event cards that show up in your hand, because you're only drawing up to five. So you've got a whole deck of cards, you know, the, this is my discard pile, but you start out over here and you got a whole deck of cards, and you may not see some of those event cards or some card you're looking for till right at the end. I mean, there's no way you can know how those cards are gonna come out in your deck. If you're familiar with the 
that particular faction and you're looking for a certain event card because you've got the board laid out so that if you were to draw that event you could really do some damage to your opponent then you're hopefully going to make that happen but you just don't know so those event cards your units it's just a matter of reading and interpreting the text which is very difficult for me to like you know, I'm, I'm going to be very upfront with you. I, I don't care for that kind of thing, and I never have. In a Euro game, of course, they play very snappy and smooth, and you have a set of rules that's, that are in a rule book, and you don't have to read these. You, generally speaking, don't have to read a bunch of card text and then try to interpret it. Now, I would say this game is one that you'll get better at the more you play it because you become familiar with everything. But you would have to play this quite a bit to be familiar with all the card text in all six of these factions. So you would have to play this game quite a bit. I thought I would like it more than I did. One thing I do appreciate it about this game is that there's no miniatures. So thank you very much. I'm glad there's no miniatures in this game that we're just using cards. So I do like that a lot. And so that the, the, the board itself doesn't look messy with, with toys on it. You're, just using this, these decks of cards that, are, that represent each faction and you're trying to, again, tactically put these units and warriors and so forth in position to take out the summoner of your opponent and to drain your uh, opponent's summoner down to zero and then you win the game. It's a very easy game to play. If you're used to playing Euro games and then you pick up Summoner Wars 2nd Edition Master Set, it's, and you're not used to these kinds of card games, it's going to be pretty foreign to you. And it is pretty foreign to us. We don't have many games that are like this. I don't know. I, I'd have to think long and hard about it. I'm not going to say this game's great. Some people think it is, but I, I don't know. It's okay. I had a pretty decent time playing it, but I don't think I would. You know, I'm looking at across my living room, and I can see 40 games on a rack that I have over there, and I wouldn't pick Summer to Wars over any of the 40. <laughs> That's why they're in my house. But, hmm, I don't know. It's just, uh, I had a pretty decent time playing it, but uh, you got some nice sculpted dice that you roll. I think it comes with eight dice. And everything about the production of the game is fine. I do like it. It's simple. It's simple. There's not a lot of physical components to worry about. Like I say, miniatures and stuff. They could have miniatured this game out and made it really a terrible big box, you know, aberration. And, and I'm glad they didn't. If you like battling games, now I, I will say this, I, I enjoy Dice Throne. You know, we have Dice Throne Season 1 Rerolled, I think, something like that. And for whatever reason, I enjoy that one. I have fun playing that game. This one, I, I just don't think it has the fun factor that Dice Throne has. I don't know why. Um, maybe because you're rolling dice to defend. So you're doing a defense. So you're always engaged in the game. Here, you're just watching your opponent do their thing and seeing what they're doing and you're going to react to it on your turn. So you're going to attack and react on your turn. So, I, I, but again, there's lots of people who love this game and, and I can see why. If you're the type of person that likes that kind of action in a game, uh, that kind of head-to-head -head combat, tactical combat, I can see why you would like this game. The art on the cards is pretty good. I mean, do you think, what do you think about it? Yeah. The I mean, it's not horrific or anything. I mean, there's like some ugly people on oh, here. Yeah, but they don't, it's not gross. But it's not, it's not gross or bloody or anything. So I appreciate that. And again, I've only used two of the factions and Lori used two. So we've played four of the factions and I pretty much know how this game works. No, I know how it feels now. And again, gosh, I don't know. I have to think about whether I would even keep this game. I, we'll have to think about it. I'll have to play it a few more times. Yeah. I just wanted to do a brief review of it. I, I know some people probably watch my videos and say, oh, you play as Euro games. But, <laughs> and that's pretty true. But once in a while, I like to venture out and I like to see why people think certain games are, are, are very good and, and find out why they think that. And that Summer Wars was one of those games. I wanted to get my hands on it and play it. And uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say this game is bad. It's not. I just don't think it's really... You'd have to have the taste for this kind of thing. Where you're, again, playing cards and interpreting card text on a continual basis. That's what you're doing in this game. And, I don't know. It's, it's different than, than just having a board game where you're moving pieces around and meshing together some mechanics to accomplish a goal. It's just different than that. And, uh, and it's, it's the type of thing that I don't enjoy as much as just a fast playing Euro game. So, 
That being said, again, I don't know if I'm going to keep this game or not. I'm going to play a couple more times so that we've played all the factions and and then make a decision from there because it may not see the table you know we always ask ourselves when we get done playing a game four or five times and i'm, I'm and we played this twice twice so we're going to play it two or three more times i, I say uh, we i always tell everyone you need to play a game five times before you make a decision about it so we'll play this five times and then we'll decide whether we want to keep it or not. And then generally the question we ask each other is, would you ever pick this game? You know, out of all the games we have, would you pick Summoner Wars and just say, hey, what game do you want to play tonight? Well, let's play Summoner Wars. Would you ever do that? And if you would never do that, then you probably shouldn't hang on to that game. So here we are with Summoner Wars. And, and if you've played it, uh, you probably have an opinion about it. Make a comment uh, at the bottom of the video. Let me know how much you like it. And... If you haven't played it, seek it out and play it. I, I usually don't like games like this, but again, I see people all over the internet, and some of them love this game, Tom Vassell being one of them, and I want to know why they think that this game is so great. Yeah, it's just not my style of game, first of all. I wanted to tell you about it and, and uh, let you make up your mind, and hopefully you can get to play it at a convention or something, don't have to go out and buy it like I did. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, that's Summoner Wars. And I think that's everything about I want to say. It came out in 2009, did I say that? But that one came out when? Yeah, this one just came out in 21. Okay, so it came out last year, this edition. But, but again, I think it comes with more cards and stuff is why they they did this. And the board is has the player aid on it, and that's really nice too. But again, I had a good, a good time playing it. I just don't know if I would call it fun. <laughs> Okay, that's Summoner Wars. See you later. <laughs> hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to Bones Collector. We just got done playing Dice Throne Season 1 Rerolled. And this game was designed by Nate Chatelier, Manny Tremblay, and Gavin Brown. And let's see, it came out in 2020, this particular edition. There was a Season 1 that was a different type of production, and they redid it in this format. I don't, I don't know what the difference is. Because it matches season two, oh, this one does. Oh, yeah. yeah see, there is a season two, and there is a Marvel also now. <laughs> so there's lots of dice thrown out there. <laughs> this is a dice-rolling Yahtzee-style, take-that-battling, variable player powers game. The winning condition is to reduce your opponent's health to zero. That's how you win this game. This game is completely out of our comfort zone. We don't play these types of games very often, but on this particular video I paired it with Summoner Wars and, and I thought that was a good matchup. It, this is the picture, I wanted to show you the picture inside the box lid here, that's pretty cool. And this is a nice heavy duty box. I mean I, I give credit where credit is due, this publisher really did a heck of a job on this game and we'll talk about that right now. I'm going to talk about a little bit about what this game is like physically. But yeah, a heck of a nice box which I really enjoy. A good rule book you know, a very nice rule book, big font, pictures, so that you can dig your way through this and figure out how to play this game. But even when you read that rule book, you're still going to have a lot of questions. Because <laughs> we did. But let's talk about these game trays, character trays. And each character comes with one of these trays. And it is so nice. And on the side of the box here, you can see there's a nice plastic... Uh, insert here that holds these character trays and then it has the character on the side of the box to show you where each character goes while it's in the box. Yeah, like that. Can you see that? So you can see how it tells you which character goes where. So, I mean, that's kind of nice. It's, it's, it wouldn't matter. You could stick them in there and then pull them out and look and see which one it was. But this, I don't know. When, you, when the publisher goes the extra mile like that, I, I, I certainly appreciate it and I'm certainly going to give them kudos for it. And then this is a, one of the character trays, and to play this game, you're simply going to take one of these characters out of the box, take your player board out, unfold it, and this is the treant, it has a picture on the back, and you'll have a character leaflet, and on this leaflet is some information on the front about the tokens that you can use for this particular character, and on the back it has an FAQ, and that's very helpful. If you're going to play these characters properly, you need to know everything about them, and reading this FAQ would certainly give you a leg up on understanding how to best use this particular character. It gives you a little bit of a backstory, 
on the character and it tells you what components should be in this tray for this character and that's called your character leaflet it'll go right beside your board like that and then you have a turn order card that comes with each character I mean that stuff's handy so you got an FAQ on the back for questions you might have a turn order card that shows you how to go through the turn you're gonna have a deck of 32 hero cards or uh, character cards to go with your the, the uh, character you're playing with you have a health tracker and a combat point tracker and then all your tokens that you're going to use for your character that go on your leaflet and then you have these beautiful wonderful dice that come with every character five of them for each character and these, these things are gorgeous really really nice looking dice and that's pretty cool and then I went and this game cost me a hundred dollars from the publisher which was what's the name of the publisher? Roxley. Roxley. Roxley Games. Roxley Games and so if you want to find it you can probably get it from them for ninety nine dollars and then I spent forty more bucks because I appreciate painted minis like these that you can get for each character in this box and in season two they have another set of painted minis that you can acquire for that game they do nothing but they sure enhance the game it helps you get immersed in the game itself so this is the treant and this is the mini for the treant and Laura will put pictures up on the screen but they're they're very very nice painted minis and then you just set that character right there on your board it just gives you more of a feel of fun for the game and I appreciate Rockstar Games doing this because I wouldn't even bother if these were gray plastic pieces psh, they can have them but I had to go spend the extra money and get these and they're already painted and ready to go and that just made my day man <laughs> I really really enjoy it. I wanted to show you guys that then again they have a set for season one and for season two so that's pretty cool and I guess that is it. Everybody's character, the dice are different color. Yeah, yeah, every, that's true. Every character, the dice are different color. And these game trays are nice and light, and everything fits in here nicely tucked away. And I'll show you, I'll just put it away so I can show you. you know, your turn order card, your deck of cards goes there, your health tracker, and it's got a cutout so you can lay your combat point tracker on there. Your dice go right back in this slot, and your tokens go in this slot. I mean, it's unbelievable. I really, really appreciate the way they publish this game. The big tokens have to lay on the turn over there. So we can do that. Yeah. And then we'll do that. Fold up your board. Turn that over and show them how it Let looks like the tramp when you yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then put the lid on and there you go. And that's and, and the nice thing about this is when you're ready to play this game, you just grab a character out of the tr out of this big tray and fold this stuff out, and you're playing in five minutes. And that's really pretty amazing stuff. I, I really like that when that happens. And uh, so I really wanted to go on about the publisher and what they did for this game. It's just fantastic. I really, really enjoy it. Now let's talk about the game a little bit. I'll get another character out here. A little more shadow thief. And in this game, you're going to set your character up and you're just going to be battling one on one, or you can, you know, it plays up to six people. Of course, it doesn't do solo. I'm sorry about that. Some of my solo friends out there, because I have a lot of people who enjoy playing solo. And lay out your leaflet, get your stuff out of here, and then you're simply on your turn going to go down your turn order card that you have here, follow what it says and work your way through the, your turn. And you have an, income, an upkeep phase, your income phase, which the starting player endures for their first turn, and then you get into a main phase where you're gonna play ability upgrade cards from your character deck, and you can play main phase action cards and sell cards to gain uh, combat points, because your combat points are your currency. So you're gonna spend those to do upgrades on your board and to play main phase action cards or even some of the instant action cards have costs on them. So those combat points are very important. And then you go into your dice rolling and you have an offensive roll phase where you're going to roll your dice and you're going to match up symbols or numbers. You can do either go either way because you, you can do a small straight, a large straight just like in Yahtzee or you can match up symbols that will give you different abilities that are here on your character board and then it also has a targeting role phase where if you have more than two players you can pick a player that you're going to attack and then it has a defensive role phase where the player 
that is getting attacked may roll to defend themselves and it has the defense on your character sheet. You only get to roll one time. It's not Yahtzee style when you're defending. You get to roll a certain number of dice one time and you get to use that to defend against the attack that your opponent is, is using against you. Most of the time there are exceptions to that rule, different types of damage. I mean and that's there are some some rules to this game. I, and I looked on Board Game Geek and it listed this game as a 2.06 and I just don't think it's that easy. <laughs> it's got a lot of rules. I mean a lot of uh, a lot of nitpicky rules especially when it comes to doing damage. But in the rule book when you go through the rule book and you can keep this handy while you're uh, playing it for the first couple of times it has a chart here damage type chart and it shows you when you can modify the damage and how you can modify the damage. So you need to familiarize yourself with that chart. Normal damage, undefendable damage, pure damage, collateral damage, and ultimate damage. So there's one, two, three, four, five different kinds of damage that is used in this game and you can defend some of it and some of it you can't. Some of it you can modify, some of it you can't. So you have to have this chart to give you an idea about how you play uh, when you're trying to defend against the attack from an opponent. So that is, it's nice to keep that chart handy when you're playing this game because you're going to have questions about it. I guarantee you we did and it, I, we got online and uh, you know read some FAQs on BGG and did all kinds of things to try to find answers to some of our questions because you're going to have questions about it. And that's why we struggle a little bit with these games because again you're interpreting card text you know what do they mean by that? What do they mean by this? How come that word means this and this word you know they use a different word over here for the same thing. So those kinds of things really throw us for a loop sometimes. But they've laid this out as simply as it can possibly be. There's a lot to unpack here. I don't want to, I just think this game has a lot of depth and complexity to it. It's easy per se but there is a lot to manage and when you're playing this game Again, you are trying to decide how you best want to use your dice. Do I want to use them for the numbers, try and get a large or a small straight? Do I want to try to use the icons to do certain things? Because, you know, there's different icons on here that are going to do different things on your character sheet. So you have to make that decision right up front. And then you have a hand of cards that you're going to try to manage also. And how much money do you have in your combat point bank and how much do you want to spend how many of those cards do you want to use do you want to save one of them specifically because I told Lori I, I would always save a, a dice modifier card when I'm playing just in case my opponent uses their ultimate ability which is right here underneath every character they have an ultimate ability that can't be blocked it's unstoppable unless you have a dice modifier card where you can change your opponent's dice that's the only way you can change from getting smacked with that. All these ultimate character things are pretty vicious. So if they can successfully attack you with that, you're going to you're going to pay dearly for it. So I would always keep a card and so it's managing your hand of cards is pretty pretty important. But I did have one thing I have a little smudge of some kind that didn't get paint on it on this character sheet for the the shadow thief. I'm going to contact them see if I can get another one of these boards. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to hold out much hope, but I'm going to try. But hey, this game, <sighs> I like it. It's fun. It's well designed game. I think it's really creative in the way that they made this game. It's a battler. Uh, if you like that kind of thing, you're going to be in love with this. But it's fantastic. I don't want to mislead you in any way. This game is a lot of fun. The more we play it, the more we like it, don't you think? Oh yeah. Yeah, we like it more and more. Because I mean, like I say, we've played we play the same character. Yeah, we've once. played every character in here, and more than once. And this time we played two games using the same character to try to see how best to make some of these maneuvers to optimize our attack and defense, and and try to get our opponent's health down as fast as we possibly can go. But. As you play these characters more, you'll get used to what they do. And I think this is a game that needs that. You need yeah. to spend time playing this game. I mean, we played it for a couple of hours, two or three hours today. And the first day we got it, when we played every character, uh, we were into this thing for like four hours. Just playing back and forth and seeing where this game would take you and where it went. And I, it, it was just a lot there that would give this game great legs for hanging on to it if you are a person that enjoys this type of thing. It says take that all the way. You're attacking constantly and but the thing is I think I, I, I it's not it doesn't feel horrible because 
you get to defend constantly for the most part. Once you get attacked, you're going to roll a defense and, and try and do the best you can with that so that you're always engaged in the game. And there isn't a single, all right, that's it. You lost. There's no moments like that. You know, it, it, until right at the end when you uh, luckily get, get enough happening to take your opponent's health down to zero. I mean, both times we were down under 10, both of us, because it's so close. I mean, once you get good at these characters, it's going to be a close game. You're, there's nobody that's going to run away and, and, and beat you. You start out at 50 on your health, and you're not going to get beat 45 to zero. You know, it doesn't happen in this game. And that's a nice designed game. It's going to come down to the wire. And it, because of that, I, I, that's one of the things I like about this game is that it's, it's designed so that it's very close. If you use your character correctly and you're, and you're familiar with your character, it'll be a close game and that makes a lot of fun. But I just wanted to try something different. Uh, I saw this a few times on YouTube being played. I was curious about it. It looked interesting. And once I saw the Game Trays character packs, and you can buy these in like two packs two and packs. four packs even. I think Actually, I think we saw one at Target. Yeah, Marvel is four pack. Marvel, a four pack at, uh, at Target. A Marvel four pack at Target last night. Mm -hmm. We were in there, and uh, it was fifty dollars. And I don't know, you know, I don't know. If I was you, I would get, you know, if I, you know, I mean, it's a hundred dollars. But the package is wonderful that this comes in because of those trays. I mean, not not these trays. I think the the Marvel. I don't know. I think they all come in these trays. Yeah, I don't know. But that. because of this box where you can put these trays away and uh, have this all in one box, I just really, really enjoy that. I wouldn't get any more than this. I know, I know there's people that probably have season one, season two, have Marvel that are really into Dice Throne. You know, they're going to get all of it and complete it. Uh, there's a lot to play here. If you get just one, season one or season two, and season two, I, uh, I said, also has Pain and Minis that you can enjoy with the game, but, I, you know, there's a lot in this one box. So I don't, you know, I would never see myself getting two boxes of this because it takes you a while to get used to playing these characters. So that once you switch them up and play different characters, the longer you have this game, I can just see you getting a lot of playtime out of this one box. So, yeah. I mean, it doesn't... I know some people love some of the characters in Season 2, but I have no desire to go beyond this. And again, uh, these wonderful minis, I had to show them again, but, you know, they come with it. And you just set that on your character board, and roll some dice, have some fun. It's a good time, and, you know, it, I know some people don't care for games that are kind of take that. For whatever reason, this is just fun. It's just, it's, I don't know. It's like playing Yahtzee. Yeah, it is. I mean, like Yahtzee's playing. take that. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah, Basically, it's, it's Yahtzee that you can defend. And you're rolling those <laughs> dice, and, and you're asking yourself, you know, do I want to stop with that roll? I mean, I've got this. Is that enough? Or do I think I can actually roll two more of that one icon to have five of a kind? Or can I roll the numbers that I need to get a small straight or a large straight? And then there's some other things you can do on here. Again, there's a lot in this box. A lot of game ladies and gentlemen, but I had fun playing it, and I wanted to tell you that it was very enjoyable. How long we'll hang on to it, I don't know. We're going to play it some more. I just want to play this thing to death, actually. I want to play it and play it and play it and decide if it's something that I want to keep for the rest of my life, because that's really where I'm at in my gaming library, is I, just, I only keep games that I think I'm going to play forever, and I don't know if that has that kind of impact for me, but we'll see. But you can rest assured and buy this with confidence that it's a terrific game. It's well designed. The publisher went, went crazy. This thing is absolutely fantastic. And again, the setup time for just grabbing a character and playing it, you're playing it in five minutes. You get this game off the shelf, each of you grab a character and off you go. And it reminds me kind of of Bones of Elder Vale. Yeah, I had that for a while and uh, it, it came like this, where you could just grab a tray, a character tray, and start playing. Uh, there's something about that. Uh, setup can be a pain in the butt on some games. And as a matter of fact, I've gotten rid of games that have terrible setup times. Just because, the, number one, the setup time was bad, and maybe the game was complex on top of it. So by the time you're done, you've just got way too much into it. But this, you know, when a publisher does something like this, and the game creators have an idea of the way they want this done, and this is just absolutely fantastic. Again, if you like this kind of thing, which, uh, again, I, I think everybody would find something to enjoy in this. It's, it just doesn't feel mean. It feels fun. 
I guess is the bottom line. And I want to tell you about it, and that is Dice Throne Season 1 Rerolled. This is really, really nice. So that's it. That's Dice Throne. It's, it's a really, really good game, and, and I hope you get a chance to play it. Check it out. Check it out. And that's it for today. See you later. Okay, everybody, that was the games for today that we played this week, and I hope you enjoyed them, and I hope that you got something, a little more something out of them than doing just those top 10s or top 100 lists, because again, I'm able to show you more in that regard. Please like and subscribe. When you take the time to like our videos and then make a comment, that's our payday. We don't get paid for any of this until you guys tell us what you think of our video. And thank you so much for that. Have a great day, and I'll see you the next time on The Bones Collector. And remember to keep on board gaming because it is the best doggone hobby on the planet. Bye-bye.